define the protocols where we deliver the data for a particular single type of physical network. As you can see from the visual images, you can see the layers there, the link layer from the physical layer the, where it goes to the network layer by different uh, protocols such as H, header to, data and token. It is also responsible for moving frames from one hub to another or as you know it is node. So we must know that it is because of framing, physical addressing, flow control, error control and access control. We learned in the previous chapter about the functions of the transport layer, TCP and UDP. <coughs> there are three cable types are, which are used in LANs. We have coaxial uh, cable type, twisted pair, fine fiber optic, which is really fast. So the coaxial has better shielding, as you can see, and it is greater than with the unshielded ones. It can spend longer distance in, at higher speeds, it's faster than the twisted pairs. The construction shielding of the coaxial cable gives a good combination of high bandwidth and excellent, excellent noise immunity. Coax is still widely used for cable television and, metro, and MAN, metropolitan area networks. As you can see from the, how the coaxial cable is built from a copper core insulating material and braiding other conductor to protect it and the protective plastic cover, covering. So these are some the layers where you can spend longer distances and from the shielding it. So we have type of twisted pairs. It is consisted by two insulated copper wires. It is typically about one millimeter thick. It is run by each, uh, it is parallel to each other. It is done, it is done because two wires are constituted by a fine antenna and this helps to avoid some kind of interference outside interferences to our twist twisted pair cables. It is usually carried as a difference in voltage between the two wires in the pair. That's why it's called twisted pair. We have unshielded uh, and a shielded and foiled twisted pair. But first of all, we're going to cover unshielded twisted pair. They all rely on the constellation effect caused by the twisting of the wire pairs to handle noise mainly. It is more than enough for domestic uses. An SCP, which are shielded twisted pair, they have conducting shield made of metallic foil encasing the twisted wire pairs, which blocks out the electromagnetic interference, allowing to carry data at a faster rate of speed. And of course, they are more expensive, more expensive than a shield because they are shielded now and more protected. And of course, we have foiled twisted pair. As you can see from the illustration, how they are, they are uh, shielded with foil around the around the twisted wires, and overall screen, which is sometimes a big flexible brand. This provides the maximum level of protection from interference and it's found from the highest performance cables. So we have fiber optics. This is really fast and this is like modern one which where we use mainly in the modern cities. Uh, they are used for long haul transmission in network backbones, high speed LANs, local air networks and high speed internet access such as FTTH, fiber to home. An optical transmission system has three key components, the light source, the transmission medium, and the detector. But, lastly, conventionally, a pulse of light indicates a, a one bit, and the absence of light indicates a zero bit. The transmission medium is an ultra-thin fiber of glass. The detector generates an electrical pulse when light falls on it. By attaching a light source to one end of an optical fiber and take to the other, we have a directional data transmission system that accepts an electrical signal, converts and transmits it by light pulses, and then reconverts the output to an electrical signal at the receiving end user or home. We have the fiber, we have multi-mode and single mode. Multi-mode has large diameter core, it allows multiple nodes of light to propagate. Because of this uh, multi-mode and propagation of light, the number of light reflections are created as the light passes through the core. 
it increases the, uh, the ability for more data to pass through at a given time. Because of the high dispersion and unsaturation rate, with this type of fiber, the quality of sign signal is reduced over long distance. The multi-mode ones, you can see from the cladding glass and core glass, how they are uh, interfered with each other and they are, they are linked, and how they uh, send the signal to the HTH, home to home. We have a single mode fiber, which has, of course, has a small diameter core that allows only one mode of light to propagate, which have more less, which have less reflections. And single mode fibers are more expensive, but are widely used for longer distances. Also, there are currently available single mode fibers can transmit data of at 100 gigabytes per second per for 100 kilometers with amplification, which is really, really cool and. Uh, really great for its uh, diametric core. We have, of course, as I mentioned last chapter, a TCP IP physical data link layer, Internet to LAN standards that define the physical data link layers of wire LAN net technology. We have Soho, small office, and home office LAN. As you can see from the illustration, we have other switch which are connected with the uh, uh, with their inter interfaces with the host devices. We have three computers and one printer. We have a, a topology of an enterprise LAN, how the building is, uh, the, the three floors. As you can see, the switches that are connected with the routers in the first floor uh, to the rest of the enterprise network. We have types, different types of internet physical data standards. It is a combination of user devices, LAN switches, and different kinds of cabling. It. We have speed that varies from 10 megabytes per second to 10 gigabytes per second, and there are uh, also common name called as internet. With the triple I triple E standard name is 10 base T, 802.3, and copper to 100 meters. Also, to, with 100 megabytes per second, it's called fast internet, or as you can see, FE for uh, uh, abbreviation. Mm, uh, that is 100 base T, 802.3U, and this copper to 100 meters. We have 1000 megabytes per second, or it's called differently gigabit internet, 1000 base LX. Don't worry about this abbreviation, I'm gonna learn even more about this uh, what I call when will I do. The formal uh, IEEE is 802.3z and it uses a fiber which covers around 5000 meters maximum length. Now of course, as I said before, we have a different kind of 1000 megabytes per second, which is 1000 base T and it, it is the standard name is the 802.3ab. The cable type is copper and it covers over 100 meters, the maximum length. And now we have 10 GB per second, or called differently 10 gig internet. It is a 10 G base T. And the formal the standard name for IEEE is 802.3an. The cable type is copper. The maximum length it covered is 100 meters. So we have three cable types. We have straight through cable. As you can see, from the simulation is how it is covered and uh, how the, the sethro cable is connected. It is a twisted pair that is used in the lab to connect the computer to a network hub such as a router in this case. We have another uh, cable type which is crossover cable. As you can see from the simulation it cross over the cable which is which connects the computing device together directly. We don't have to like go with another switch, another host directly there with crossover. But we may uh, cable is mainly used nowadays, but uh, crossover cable might have a nearly future about it. As you can see from the topology, crossover cables. But uh, which cable to use? Of course, there are different kinds of RJ45 
or internet LAN uh, jack is called different then they are transmitting on pins one and two and, and three and six one and two is PC NIX routers and wireless access point internet interfaces meanwhile the transmit on pins three and six PF hubs switches and we don't have any access internet interface in this case as you can see from the illustration uh, what the pins are covered one is white green two is green three is white orange four is blue five is white blue six is orange seven is white brown eight is brown for the rg45 pinout t568a this is the first when we put the switch or the modem on the router which this is the first one a and we have b which is for the pin codes uh, one is white orange two is orange three is white green four is blue five is white blue six is green seven is white brown and eight is brown we have rj45 which connectors and ports it stands for Register Jack 45 is a big use internet style data port. This found the switches, router, and network cards. As you can see, illustration with our RG45 connector and RG45 ports. We can find it in the graphic card in our computers, also on the switches, routers, modems, hubs, wherever we have to connect the RG45 connector. Register Jack. We have wireless LAN. The standard is 802.11, it can be used in two modes, infrastructure mode and the ad hoc network, which is never uh, seen in, uh, the in the next session. Infrastructure mode, each line is associated with the AP access point. It is turned to connect to the other network. The client sends and receives its packets via the access points. And the other mode is the ad hoc network. This mode is a collection of computers that are associated so that can directly set frames to each other. There is no access point since internet is uh, access, access is the killer application for wireless. Ad hoc networks are not very popular. That's why uh, we don't have any access point and uh, of course it is way faster this ad hoc. We should use this even more but I think the military is trying to confuse uh, confiscate some of the melee one, but we don't want to talk about it. Physical layer corresponds fairly well to OSI, open system inter interconnection. Physical layer and the data link layer of the 802 protocols is split into two or more sub layers. In the 2011, the MAC address, the medium access control, the sub layer determines how the channels are located, that is, who goes to the transpix next. Above is LLC, the logical link control, uh, whose job is to hide the difference between the different 802 variants and make them indistinguishable as far as the network layer is concerned. As you can see from the illustration, we have upper layers, the link layer, and physical layer. We have some release date from 1997 to 2009, where the max up layer, which is or different called the logical link layer which are different from 802.11 to frequencies hopping in the infrared to 2009.82.11 and MIMO OFDM. The wireless LAN 802.11a method is based on OFDM orthogonal frequency division multiplexing because uh, OFDM uses spectrum efficiently and resists wireless signal degradation such as multiple bits are sent over 52 subcarries in parallel and 48 of them carry data and 4 are used uh, for synchronization. At the 11a can run at a different rates ranging from 6 to 54 megabytes per second. These rates are significantly faster than 811b uh, and there is less interference in the 5 GHz band which covers more. However, 802.11b has a range that is about 7 times greater than the 802.11a. And we have now 802.11g, which is approved by IEEE in 2003. It uses all of the OFDA modulation methods of 802.11a, but it also operates in an error of 2.4 GHz ISM band. Along with the 802.11b, 
Of course, it will offer the same rights that of 802.11a, which is which covers uh, maybe 6 to 54 megabytes per second, if I'm not wrong. And the plus, of course, compatibility with any 802.11b devices that happen to be nearby. Yes, I just confirmed that it is 6 to 54 megabytes per second. Uh, of course, we have continuation files, wireless lens. The committee, the IEEE, which is for engineering elect electricals, which helps engineers control the wireless and the, the new protocols. It became work on a high throughput physical layer called 802.11n. It was certified in 2009, and the, its goal was uh, to throw output the at least 100 megabytes per second. After all the wireless overheads were removed, this goal called for a raw speed increase of at least a factor of hour. To make it happen, the committee doubled the channels from 20 MHz to 40 MHz and reduced framing overheads by allowing a group of frames to be sent together. At the 2011 it is up to four antennas to transmit up to four streams of information at the same time. The signals of the stream interfere at the receiver, but they can be separated using MIMO, or uh, the abbreviation is multiple input output, input multiple output, MIMO. Communication techniques. The use of these antennas gives a large speed boost or better range and re reliability instead. You can get them from your uh, local shop or workshop, wherever you want, and try it because it's really fast and gives a better range and it, and we have the 802.11 ac which is a wireless networking standard in the uh, 802.11 family and uh, of course the ieee e e engineers called it the wi-fi it is developed in the in the east standardization process it provides high th throughput wireless local area networks on the 5 gigahertz, gigahertz band. The standard was developed from 2009 to 2013, 2011 to 2013. It was approved in the early January 2014. This specification is expected through uh, multi-station WLAN throughput uh, of at least 1 gigabit per second and single link throughput of at least 500 megabit per second, which is really fast. To think about it in the, for the Wi-Fi. This is accomplishment by extending the air inter interface, consists in breadth by 802.11n. We have wider RF bandwidth uh, to 160 mega megahertz. We have more MIMO, uh, multiple input and multi multiple output, special streams out to 8. We have multi-user MIMO and uh, high density modulation up to 256 QAM. The link layer uses the services of the physical layer to send the receive and receive bits of communication channels. It is a number of functions. It includes a well-defined service interface on the network layer. It deals with transmission errors. It regulates the flow of data that's, so that slow receivers are not spawned by fast senders. To accomplish uh, this goal, the link layer takes the packets it gets from the network layer and consolidates them into frames for transmission. Each frame contains a frame header, a payload field for holding the packet, and a frame trailer. Frame management forms the heart of what the data link layer does. It, it is provided uh, to the network layer. The function of the data link layer is to provide services to the network layer. The principal service is transferring data from the network layer on the source machine to the network layer on the destination machine. We have framing, which provides the service to the network layer. The link layer must use the service provided to it by the physical layer only. But sometimes you can go directly through the other different layers of the OS I anticipate, the transport, network session, etc. Uh, the physical layer, it accepts the raw bit stream and attempts to deliver it in the destination. The bit stream received by the data link layer is not guaranteed to be error free, of course. It is up to the data link layer to detect and then necessary to correct errors. It sends the packet and the checks how many I send, how many you got, how many I want to give, and how many you receive them again. 
The usual approach is for the data link layer to break up the bitstream into discrete frames, compute a short token, which is called a checksum for each frame, and include a checksum in the frame when it is transmitted. When a frame arrives at the destination, the checksum is computed. We have the link layer. As you can see from the simulation, it is mainly about the API packets and the internet headers goes with the internet trailer. And the other uh, receiver, which uh, is for the decapsulation, internet header with the IP packet, internet trailer. The packets are sent and from transmitted from Larry with an IP 1.1.1. This is from, from class 1 and, and uh, it sends the packets to the receiver. A router in this case, and it, it de encapsulates it. Of course, we have the bytes, and we have a same preamble 1 SFT, 6 for destination, source 6, type 2, and data and pad from 46 to 1000, 1500 range, and trailer FCS 4. As you can see from synchronization, significance, identification definition and the packets with the data and pad are held by IPv4 and IPv6 packets and frame check. Of course, don't forget these are from different bytes, 7, preamble, 1 for start frame, 6 for destination, uh, 6 for source MAC address, uh, for type is 2, data and pad is, is the range from 46 to 1500, and frame check is 4. The broadcast address frames are sent to this address should be delivered to all devices to the internet LAN. And then the multicast address frames are sent to internet, multicast internet addresses, and they will be copied and forwarded to a subset with device on LAN that volunteers to receive frames sent to a specific multicast address. As you can see from illustration, we have sizing bits and sizing the hexadecimal and the and an instance term. Uh, illustration 00602F. F is in, in the is 15 in the bits in the they have in decimal, but it can be transmitted in binary by 1111. And of course, we have the vendor assigned 3A07PC, B is 11. And C is 12. We have the collision domain concept. It is, as the name complied, implies, the part of net, network where the packets are collided. Uh, it occurs when two devices send packets at the same time on a shared network segment. The packets collide and both devices must send the packets all over again. And this reduces the network efficiency. The collisions are often in a hub environment because each port on a hub is in the same collision domain. By contrast, each port on a bridge, a switch or a router is in separate collision domain. As you can see from illustration, you will say the packets on the collision domain. And broadcast domain is the domain which which the broadcast is forwarded. It contains all devices that uh, reach each other data link layer or SI layer two and by using the broadcast address. <coughs> All ports on a hub or switch are by default in the same broadcast domain. All ports on the router are in the different broadcast domain. And the routers don't forward broadcasts from one broadcast domain to another. But what's the difference between the hub and switch? Uh, the hub it serves as a connection point for all devices in the lab. It is basically a multiple port repeater because it repeats another request signal that comes in one port out all the other ports to send the common port layer one device. A switch in the context of networking is a high speed device that receives incoming data, packets and redirects them to their destination, a local area network, which is a layer two device. In a hub, all stations are in the same collision domain and broadcast domain. Uh, they must use the CAS MA or CD algorithm to schedule the transmission. In a switch, each port is, no, uh, is independent collision domain. In the common case, that the cable is full duplex. Both the, the station and the port can send the frame of the cable at the same time. 
without worrying about other parts and stations. Collisions are now impossible and CSMA and CD is not needed. A switch improves performance over a hub in two ways. First, it, uh, we don't have any collision and the capacity is more efficiently. And secondly, uh, with a switch, multiple frames can be sent simultaneously by different stations. And switches have buffering while hubs don't have them. But uh, while sending internet frames, uh, the PC1 builds and sends the original internet uh, frame. It uses its own MAC address as a source address and PC2 MAC address as a destination address. Switch SW1 it receives and forwards the internet frame as a GIO2 go from the Ethernet interfaces, Giga Output interface, Giga Interface 01 to SW2. Switch ASW2 receives and forwards the internet frame as FO2, a fast internet interface, or to PC2. It receives the frames, PC2, it recognizes the essential MAC address as its own and processes the frame. While using a hub, it forwards the data using physical layer standards and are therefore considered to be layer 1 device. The hub floats each frame out all other ports except the incoming ports. So in this case, Archie frame uh, goes to both layer and Bob, but uh, Bob's frame goes to layer and Archie. PC2 receives the frame, recognizes the destination MAC address as its own, and processes the frame. As you send half duplex, the device must wait to send if it's currently receiving a frame. In other words, it cannot send and receive at the same time. While for duplex, it does not have to wait before sending, you can send and receive at the same time. As I said, so with the CSMA, with the collision detection algorithm, it is the basis of classic Ethernet plan, uses a carrier sensing scheme in which transmitting data station detects other signals while transmitting a frame, and stops transmitting that frame, transmits a James signal, and then waits for a random time inter interval before trying to resend a frame. CSMACD is used to improve CSMA collision with the detection uh, performance by terminating transmission as soon as the collision is detected, thus shortening the time required before retry can be attempted. But what are the steps that we, sh we should do? First, uh, we have device sensor frame to send uh, listens until the internet is not busy. Second, when when the internet is not busy, the sender begins to send the frame. And uh, while the sender is sending to uh, dis discover whether a collision will occur or is occurring, it might be caused by many reasons, including unfortunate timing, uh, because all currently sending nodes to do the following, that send the jamming signals, that all the nodes that collision happen, they independently choose a random time to wait and try again, and the next attempts start all over again. We have bridges, which are used to connect different LANs together, have been used in the time of legacy internet, which is with multiple ports are called switches. How the bridges are connected, they are based on the MAC addresses of the destination found in the MAC table. And the MAC uh, table of MAC addresses in this port are where the hosts with those MAC addresses are connected to. Bridges when the switch is switched on, the mega table is empty. When computers uh, start to communicate, the frames sent to the, from the source arrive to the switch port. As the mega table is empty, no communication was started yet, the switch should populate its mega table in order to be able to forward frames in, in the appropriate port. The mega table gets populated during the learning process. The switch learns uh, the MAC addresses when the frames arrive in the port of the switch. As you can see from demonstration, from different horse, when you send the ARP, the recognition, the devices that want to communicate need to know each other MAC addresses before sending out packets. They use the ARP protocol, address resolution protocol, to find out the MAC addresses of another device. The first host, A, it knows the IP address of host B, but since the first time the two hosts communicate, the MAC addresses are, are known. <coughs> The host A uses the ARP process to find out the MAC address of host B. The switch forward the ARP request 
out of all parts except the part of the host host tag. The host B receives the ARP request and responds with its MAC address at host B and also learns the MAC address of host A. Because the first host serves its MAC address in the ARP request, the switch learns which MAC address, MAC address is associated with this port and they have a connection. As you can see from the illustration, each MAC address is they contain hexadecimal values. We have the third port. In this MAC address is uh, the table. We have the six port interfaces. Interface. The package is sent, and uh, which we are over. So we can do some uh, quizzes if you want. You can pause and come over again. So in the LAN for small office, some of the devices connect to the LAN using cable, while others. Use connect using wireless technology and no cable. But which of the following is regarding to the use of Internet LAN? So, yes, if you choose A, it is correct because they are only connected to, um, with the cable while others are using wireless technology and only devices that are using cables are using Internet. We have the Second question, we have two types of devices using 100 base D network, which is 100 gigabyte gigabit per second. If these devices were connected with the UTP, Ethernet cables, unsheeted twisted pair, which pair of devices requires retro cable? Yes, we have PC and switch wireless access points and router and hub we have another quiz which of the following are true about from an internet address of course we have the oy code we have b c e because it uses three bytes of the address it sends in the first of the address and holds the manufacturer code called the OUI. Now the second question it is which of the following turn described internet address can be used to send one frame this zero to the device in the lab? Of course, now as I said it before, you have broadcast address and multicast address. So thank you for sticking out with me. Hope to see you uh, tomorrow.